Why do you think uh, it seems like there's a lot of fighters that have had uh, a past where they've been addicted to certain things? Do you think that uh, fighting somehow lends itself to maybe people that have some addictive personalities or oh, something like that? Oh, one hundred percent. Like there's a there's a very common theme with fighters, and and majority of them come from a history of drug and alcohol abuse or like actual physical abuse. You know, mm. um, and I really think that for me personally, fighting gave me something to channel that energy into and there, there's like yeah I don't know it's so addictive it, it really does it really does replace whatever it was that created the addiction to alcohol for me it was always alcohol um and the way that I was able to go sober was focusing on fighting and, and like setting goals within fighting that became bigger than my desire to drink alcohol but it is it's such a I have so many friends in this industry that do have that exact same history of mm. drug and alcohol abuse and I think something like wanting to beat the hell out of another person kind of takes a certain a certain sort of mentality, you know, and a certain sort of person. Um, and so I definitely think there's a correlation between that type of person and having an addictive personality. Because it is, it's like a weird amount. It's like, not, I want to say like 90% of people I know mm. in this sport, with the exception of someone like GSP, who's a legitimate martial artist, majority, majority either currently have addiction issues or come from a history of addiction issues. I think maybe it's a little fight club-ish. Yeah. Like what you're <laughs> fight, fighting yourself almost. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. Well, think about it. Like what is drug and alcohol addiction? Like we, I, I used it to not have to deal with any of my issues, you know? And I've, I've definitely noticed um, I actually just went through this recently. I want to say 2019, uh, where coach and I had, had to have a big discussion about it, where I realized that I was using training the exact same way I used to use alcohol, you know, like I was feeling a lot of really negative feelings and I was struggling internally. And so I would just try to out physically outwork how I felt. And then that wasn't the answer either because I still wasn't dealing with whatever it was I was upset about, you know? Um, so I definitely think, that kind of makes sense. Like we go from, from running away from our feelings and running away from our issues by numbing them with alcohol to then going to physically outwork them. And you have a certain level of success with that until you get to the top. And then you're like, Oh, this is actually really, really mental as well. So if I'm mentally off, it doesn't matter what physical shape I'm in or like how technical I, I am. If I'm still feeling those negative feelings, like they come out in that moment when you're under the bright lights and when you're in front of everyone, then it's like, oh my God, every negative thing that I've ever said about myself comes out in this moment when I need to not, I need to not be feeling that, you know? Yeah. So it is that that's kind of been, um, the battle for like the last couple of years. And honestly, having a coach like Kirian has helped me get through that so much, but I know I'm definitely not the only fighter that experiences that. Power Project family, how's it going? So no matter what diet you're on or no matter what supplements you take, it's necessary as you get older to know what's going on under the hood. That's why I've partnered with Merrick Health. They're the premium telehealth clinic owned by Derek from More Plates, More Dates. And we have a panel that will allow you to get all of your labs done and checked in a super easy fashion. Andrew, how can they get it? Yeah, you guys got to head over to MerrickHealth.com slash Power Project. That's M A. R E K health.com slash power project. And at checkout, enter promo code power project to save $101 off of this comprehensive panel. Links to them down in the description, as well as the podcast show notes. How long was alcohol a problem for you? And like how early? And then how long did it take for you to kick it after fighting? Or did it recur, come back here and there <laughs> through the career? Um, so I didn't start, di I didn't start drinking till I was 19 till my grandma died. So mm. when my grandma died, that's kind of, that's when I started, when I spiraled. Mm. And then I was working in nightclubs for a long time back in Australia. So definitely didn't help. People would always give me free drugs. Like yeah. I would get free, free drinks. You know, I managed the nightclubs. Everyone was like, oh, let us in. I'll give you a bag of pills. <laughs> Bet. Let's do it, you know. <laughs> um, and then so I was still doing that when I found kickboxing. And I was just kind of making them exist together. Like I never, I think at that time I didn't really realize how much of a problem it was. And it was only, um, I realized it was a problem in 2018 because I went sober in July 2018 and it was because I lost a fight. I fought Jessica I on UFC Singapore um, and that whole camp, I was so unhappy. And so I drank the whole camp. The only time I didn't drink was in fight week when I was Whoa. in Singapore. Yeah. Mm. And then I lost that and went, man, I got to make some changes. The first thing that went was alcohol. So I've been four years sober now. Um, so I got rid of that. And then once I got rid of that, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm in a really toxic work environment. Like, and then I had to leave my coach, leave my gym and make a bunch of different changes. But 
if I hadn't have realized that the alcohol was such a big issue, I don't think I would have made all those other changes. Like it was real hard for about a year, but then my body started working better. Mentally, I felt better. I finally made the decisions that I needed to make to get to coach Kiri. And I'd been trying to get up here for eight years, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, my life 100% got so much better when I quit drinking, but it, it was a, it was a big problem. Like I, I had tried going sober a couple of times before that. Um, but I think it really did take that loss and just, I remember one night sitting in my house, I, I had an apartment by myself and I just had my puppy and a cat and I was like sitting, drinking a bottle of Jägermeister <laughs> 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 by myself. Yeah. Cause I used to convince myself, I was like, oh yeah, I'll just drink a bottle of tequila cause it has fiber. They say it's good for you. Oh, it has fiber? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'll drink a bottle of vodka. It has no calories. I'll drink Jägermeister because it's a digestive, you, you know? like start replacing that with uh, these legendary <laughs> yeah. tasty pastries here. Oh, yeah. They got I mean, fiber. <laughs> 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 that's the first time I yeah, heard that shit. But oh. no, but it's like it's crazy when you like it's Justify crazy. It, yeah. yeah, you can convince yourself of anything, right? Oh, yeah. And then yeah, there was one night where I don't know why I was sitting in my I was sitting in my apartment with my dog and my cat by myself drinking Jägermeister in the dark and like filming videos for YouTube. And then I went back and watched them the next morning. I'm like, what is wrong with me? Like <laughs> there's a serious issue here. Like who sits in their house filming videos for YouTube wasted? And <laughs> they were just me rambling to my dog. Like it wasn't even anything. It just, yeah. That then sounds I, entertaining. Yeah, actually. I mean, I always had a good time, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I kind of realized after that, I was like, Oh, I don't think this is that healthy. And then I like, then, so I started trying to make decisions to like better my life. I was like, okay, I'm going to start going to coach with my, my strength coach at the time was Bo Sandoval at the UFC Performance Institute. Um, and he and his wife and his kid used to always go to this church in Vegas. So I was like, all right, I'm going to start going to church with them. And like the first time I tried to go, I was too hungover to get up and go. And I went, you know what? Like this is, this is a, this is a moment for me right now where I was actively trying to do something to better my life and my alcohol, my alcohol addiction stopped me from being able to do that. And it might seem like a small thing, but it was like the straw that broke the camel's back, you know? And then that's when I went, no, I'm done. I'm done. And I haven't, I relapsed at the end of 2020 for five weeks. Um, and outside of that, it's been smooth sailing power project family a lot of the guys in the audience said that they hate me whispering so i won't whisper anymore i'll just whisper here again so go ahead and comment down below like comment subscribe and check out all our sponsors here in the bio or the description okay all right bye